Good, good day. So uh, I'm Aaron van Hoene, and uh, today I will talk about PNP PowerShell and how you can be uh, more successful using PNP PowerShell. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll show you some tip, little tips and tricks on how to get up and running and how to use PNP PowerShell. Um, so first a bit about me. I am, uh, as the name said already, Erwin van Hoene. That's a Dutch name. I was born in the Netherlands, although I moved already, I don't know, more than oh, close to 20 years ago to Sweden. Um, and uh, there I live currently in the middle of a forest, uh, which is wonderful, uh, a lot of space, um, no neighbors, uh, but it also has a one little downside and it's that I have a very slow internet connection. I only have a 4G connection currently. And uh, uh, that, will, uh, that, that you will see a bit later on um, during the demos also when I start to install things. Um, I'm uh, called the father of PNP PowerShell among friends. I uh, wrote it in capitals and bold uh, because I'm not so sure yet what to think of it. It actually makes me feel very, really old, but it's okay. You can call me the father of PNP PowerShell because that's I, I uh, created it a bit more than six years ago already. Um, Besides uh, my uh, my uh, my work and the work for PMP PowerShell, I actually also make music. Um, you see there a URL there that points to a YouTube channel where I post my music. Don't expect very fancy videos, but uh, it's just a hobby of mine. Uh, some of you might have seen me in uh, uh, in my office with a uh, video call, and then you notice that there's a lot of synthesizers standing behind me, and that is uh, is one of my big hobbies. You'll find the link to my uh, weblog. And there is my Twitter account. So first, a bit of the history. Uh, I won't go too deep in here because we only have limited time and uh, the majority of the presentation is actually just uh, demos. Uh, so PNP PowerShell has been created in 2014 out of frustration. I, uh, I wanted to do a lot of things towards SharePoint Online, um, um, but I always ended up writing these uh, console applications that did a thing. And if I wanted to change something, I had to uh, recompile the console application. Um, so that's where PMP PowerShell came. Um, it's like, if what if I could just script against SharePoint Online? And the, the rest is history. It's been downloaded millions of times already. And it's, uh, we, we actually see that it is being used on a monthly basis more than 1.1 billion times. These are only the SharePoint Online uh, commandlets. There is also commandlets for 2013, 2016, et cetera. But uh, only for the online commandlets, we see one point, more than 1.1 billion commandlets being executed per month, which is a ridiculous number. So the agenda of today will be getting up and running, installing it, some tips and tricks about installation, and, and also, and uh, I hope you don't, but say you want to uninstall PMP Voucher, I'll show you a, a bit about that too. And I will show you a sneak peek of PowerShell core in an Azure function. And we'll get to that in the second demo. So getting up and running with PMP PowerShell. So in order to install PNP PowerShell, I opening PowerShell on my machine. I, in this specific setup, I uh, am using um, the uh, Windows terminal, which I can strongly recommend. It makes it very easy to launch different versions of PowerShell, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, but um, um, any PowerShell session will do as long as uh, you're, you're running um, uh, PowerShell 5 or newer. Um, so, uh, to install the module, it's a matter of uh, entering uh, this command, install module name, and then the name of the module, module you want to install. So what it does behind the scenes is if I press enter right now, is that it connects to the PowerShell gallery. Uh, so www.powershellgallery.com and it will uh, find the module and it found it and it will start to download it. Um, on my machine, that might take a bit longer than your machine. Uh, the reason it's so slow here is because I have only a 4G connection here. I live in the middle of a forest uh, in the middle of Sweden. So a very slow connection. I don't have fiber, unfortunately. Um, so the connection here, uh, or the PowerShell downloads uh, the, the packets, uh, installs it on my machine. And after a bit, the command prompt should come back. And there we go. Now, when it is installed, I can use connect PNP online. 
which is the first commandlet uh, you should execute. Um, one of the parameters is URL. And I enter uh, a URL on my tenant. And then if I press enter, it will ask me to enter my credentials. So I press enter and now I'm connected. And uh, now I can do things like, for instance, uh, give me the current, uh, give me the current web. Uh, and I can do things with the web. I can retrieve lists, etc. Now to make your life a bit easier, um, because it, it, especially if you do a lot of PNP PowerShell or if you want to run this unattended, um, you do not want to enter the username and password all the time. So to make your life a bit easier, you can do something. Uh, you can use a uh, built-in commandlet of PNP PowerShell. This add PNP stored credential has a name, say uh, PNP conference username. If I press enter, it wants to know a password. That's the password for that specific username on your tenant. Um, so if I um, enter my password here. So from now, I can do a, a connect PNP online. Go back here, credentials, and I can just enter that name, that label that I entered up here. So I can enter PNP conference. And I'm connected still to the site. We can make it even even easier. And if I do this disconnect PNP online, so we're sure we have no connection there. So I do now, for instance, get PNP web, I should get an error message, there's no connection. So if I say add PNP stored credential name, and I enter the URL of my tenant, not the whole site, you can do that too, but I'll explain that later, but just the URL of your tenant, and then username, and the password. And now I do a connect PNP online. To my specific site and press enter. You see there is no prompt, I'm just connected. What it what happened here is that it actually added in the Windows Credential Manager, which you can find in your control panel. Um, in the Windows Credential Manager, it added an entry with HTTPS, like but this is the name. And what PMP PowerShell does is when you do a connect, it will check first if there is an entry with this in there. And if it finds it, it will use that entry to connect to this site. But if it also finds an entry called, for instance, sites like this, it will use that one first. So it will, it will work its way backward. So it will start to search for this part, then it will start to search for this part, and then it will start to search for this part. So if I create another entry in here with add stored credential uh, that is called with the full URL of this, I can automatically connect to that site with different credentials from basically any other site in my tenant, uh, fully unattended, and I don't have to enter any username and password at runtime. It's a very easy um, way of um, managing your credentials. You can also remove stored credentials. You can also retrieve stored credentials uh, by remove PNP stored credential and get PNP stored credential. So for instance, if I do get PNP stored credential uh, there, and I say uh, PNP conference was the one we created before. I get a username. There's also a password, of course, we're not rendering that one. And remove PNP stored credential P conference. Do you want to remove it? Yes. So now it's gone from my credential manager. You can do this all also directly in the credential manager. That's up to you. But I, uh, we have commandlets for it to make your life a bit easier. So this is the, the, uh, the easiest way, I would say, to connect to your tenant. Now, there's also other ways of connecting. For instance, if you want to connect to uh, the graph, say I want to uh, list out all the teams I have. That is a graph. Um, we need the, the Microsoft graph for that um, because we're talking to something completely different from SharePoint. So if I say, for instance, we have a command for that, get teams team. It says, unable to retrieve a token for the Microsoft graph. Ensure that you're using one of the connect uh, online. Uh, connect uh, PNP online commandlets to connect correctly. And the way to do that is as follows. Connect PNP online. 
And then you enter scopes, group, for instance, read all. You can also group read write all. Credentials, and then I'm providing the credentials of the URL that I'm connecting to. Now I have to specify this label. It could also use the PNP conference label here, but I just removed that. But I have to specify a label here. If I wouldn't do that, it, it doesn't know which credentials, there's no way to figure out uh, which credentials I'm going to use. Of course, I could do it a very old school uh, PowerShell, so I get credential. What will happen now if I press enter? It will prompt me for credentials. And now I'm connected to the graph. And, and these things you see here is something I modified myself. This is not standard PNP PowerShell. I'll, I'll get into that too. So get um, PNP Teams team. And I get a list of my teams. And that's basically uh, how it works, connecting to the graph. And, and everything, every commandlet that requires access to the graph, you require to connect with uh, this method, uh, with the scopes. Uh, there's way more ways of connecting um, um, and in order to get an overview of all those different ways of connecting with um, with uh, your own client ID and your own client secret or your own client ID and your own certificate and everything, I would uh, recommend you to read the help uh, connect PNP online. If you go for detailed, you see all the various, and it's, it's, it's an, uh, a lot of options here but you find all the, the different ways of connecting. And if you scroll a bit down, you see all the parameters that we provide, the support. And if you go a bit even lower, you'll find examples here. This is just the base connection and another one with credentials, or if you're on-prem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of options here to connect uh, and examples. So, um, this little thing that you show here in the front, that see here, that you see here in the front, it's a it's a very nice way of of, of having an, a visual indicator of where you are and what you're connecting to. Uh, so if I connect back, for instance, to my uh, SharePoint site, if we go back up to in the history, uh, so you see that it actually shows um, my tenant name and the uh, or my username. No, my tenant, sorry, it's my tenant identifier. It's this part of the, of the URL and um, the site name. How does it do that? Um, well, the, the way it does that is by um, figuring out um, two environment variables that are being set by PNP PowerShell the moment you do a connect. And I put those in my profiles, uh, my profile. So if you um, find your profile, um, and the easiest way, if you don't have one, but you want to create one, is by just entering notepad dollar profile. And it will open an existing one, or it will create a new one. And <clears throat> if you scroll a bit down here, you find an, a bit of a story, but um, go, I will not go into much detail on what's happening here, but effectively there is this uh, this one, this environment variable, PNP PS host. And there is, if we look a bit down here, you see that actually there's also a PNP PS site. Um, so the host contains the full host name. So whatever.sharepoint.com uh, or DE or US, depending a bit on uh, which Azure environment you're using. Um, and um, the site is containing the full path to the site slash site slash demo one, demo two, etc. So here you can then um, uh, do some some um, like uh, massaging with those variables. And if you overwrite the prompt, you create a function prompt, uh, it will render out a prompt. There's another couple of other things that does this script do. It also um, shows git status and all kinds of other things. Um, I have a blog post um, about this, how to uh, how to get this up and running and what to do with this. So. All the command lists that we have, we have close to 500 command lists currently, and I will not go through all of them. That's just too much, just too much here. Um, but keep in mind that every time, and, and we release um, um, roughly on a monthly basis. So every time we release a new version, 
you will be notified uh, by Connect PNP Online. Uh, so the moment you do a Connect PNP Online, there will be a message stating like, hey, there's a new version for you available. We do a call back uh, to um, our GitHub repo, check if there's a version available. If so, it, we will tell you. If you install a new version, it will install it besides the current version. And PowerShell will automatically use the latest version available. So uh, normally th that won't bug you, uh, but keep in mind that the version smart might start to build up uh, in your environment. If you ever want to uninstall PNP PowerShell, I wouldn't know why, but say you want to uninstall PNP PowerShell, um, keep in mind that you have to install all these versions. And the easiest way to do it is actually by entering uninstall module name, SharePoint PNP PowerShell online. It's not case sensitive, by the way, if you saw me making the typo there, but it doesn't matter. And then is there a parameter here, all versions? Then it will just remove everything from your machine, all the versions of PNP PowerShell. Another tip I want to give you is how to install PNP PowerShell on an environment where you have no internet connection available. Say you want to use PNP PowerShell for on-premises and the 2013 version, and you want to copy it to a server. That server does not have access to the internet, but does have access to the SharePoint 2013 farm. The way to go forward there is to, um, the easiest way to go forward, I would say, is to just create a folder. Say uh, I make a folder here called uh, PNP Conference. And I go into that folder. You see it's empty, so I say save module, and I say name, and it is uh, SharePoint PNP PowerShell 2013. And then there is a property here, path, and it wants the full path, so PNP conference. And if I press enter now, it will do effectively the same part as the install part, but it will, will not install it it will just save it to this location. So we wait until the download is done. But the idea is, is that uh, moment, the moment you have this saved folder uh, on your machine, you can move it to another machine. And then um, and there are several ways of actually uh, referring it, uh, making it auto load, or you do a manual uh, loading of the uh, PowerShell module. So now it's saved. If I look at this folder, you see there's a SharePoint PNP PowerShell 2013 folder. And in that folder, there's a version number. So when you start to uh, do install module, you will see that these numbers update. A uh, little sidetrack, uh, there is actually a logic uh, in our numbering. This is a major version. This is um, uh, the 24th release uh, since we released the 3.0. And this is the year and this is the month. So that's how we release. So this is the August release um, for the 2020. Um, so if you look into this folder, Effectively, what you can do is basically take this whole folder structure and everything below and copy it to your destination, to the server where you want to uh, uh, use PNP PowerShell. And there's where to put it. So PNP PowerShell, or not PNP PowerShell, sorry, PowerShell has a, um, an, an, an environment variable, variable called PS module path. So if you look into that variable, let me make a bit of space here. Um, PS module path. Think of this as a path for more for PowerShell. So if you if it finds a module in one of these folders, it will automatically make that available and will load it automatically the moment you do uh, you enter one of the commandlets in that module. So if you have your PNP PowerShell located somewhere in these folders, it will automatically load it for you. And you will notice if you look at this path that you see there's actually a one in my local user folder. So this is my user directory. There's a documents folder. There's a Windows PowerShell folder. There's a modules folder. So if I copy this folder and all this content, including the folder name, so not only the content of the folder, but the full folder name and everything below to this location here, to the modules folder, 
and I reload PowerShell, from that moment on, PNP PowerShell will be available on that machine. You can also go directly, if you don't want that, you want your own location, um, you can go into the folder, and you find there's a PSD1 file here. And this file defines the module, actually. This is a, a definition file, uh, contains all kinds of references and etc. So what you can do then is install module and you say SharePoint. Uh, sorry, not install module, import module, SharePoint PMP PowerShell 2013 PSD1. You will get a warning uh, and the warning has to do with the fact that uh, uh, PowerShell only supports like a certain a limited list of, of, or, of, or not limited necessarily, but a list of approved verbs. So that's the part before the dash. This part, import, export, get, remove, add, new. And uh, PMP PowerShell has one commandlet in there, or actually two commandlets, sorry, two commandlets that use an unsupported verb being apply apply PNP provisioning template and apply PNP tenant template. Uh, that's the reason you get this message. It's just a warning. Uh, it's nothing will break. Um, it's just, that's where this, this come from. Um, so this is a way of, uh, um, so if you could, if you want to write your own script um, on a machine where you do not want to install PNP PowerShell, but you still want to use PNP PowerShell, is make sure that you have it, uh, the folder structure somewhere on the machine and write this as the first line in your script. Import module, SharePoint PNP PowerShell 2013.psd and, to the, and then include the full path of that PSD1 file. And it will automatically load it. Keep in mind that you cannot unimport a module. So once imported during the session of PowerShell, it stays imported. Um, keep that in mind. Um, and, and that's uh, basically uh, the trick of um, using a PowerShell module, a PNP PowerShell on a different machine than uh, uh, the one that you're currently on. So now you know in principle how to install PMP PowerShell, how to install it on a machine where you have uh, no internet connection. Um, so if you want to use an on-prem version. Um, so uh, we used to have these MSI files available for you to download. Um, it, it, it was a lot of hassle for us to build them uh, for every release uh, because we have to go through a signing uh, loop and uh, signing the various files. Um, um, and you can actually just do it very simply also with save module. You get the same files. It's just a different way of getting them on the machine. So that's why we stopped releasing the MSI files and um, provide you with this option now. So what I did is um, I created a new uh, resource group in, uh, in Azure. And in there, I created a function app. And it's just a normal V3 function app. So if I click, I'll, I'll just go through the, a few of the screens, but I will not create the function app again, so you get an idea. So I click add, create a new function app. Click create. I fill in the blanks. And what is important then is that you um, actually fill in here, that you select here, that you use PowerShell core. And then it's up to you if you want to use 6.2 or 7.0. I selected 7.0. You go through the wizard and it will create the function app for you. So when the function app has been created, if you go back to the resource group, then it's important that you upload PNP PowerShell. So what you do then <clears throat> is uh, that you go down, you scroll down here and you'll find advanced tools. Click on that one and click on go. A new tab will open and will open Kudu for you. And here you pick one of the choices here, command or PowerShell, obviously I pick PowerShell, but it doesn't really matter that much because all the work will be done in this bigger part here on the top. You navigate to the site folder, you navigate to the www root folder, and there you create a folder called modules. And if you open the modules folder, there you drop in the folder of PNP PowerShell. Now, what I'm using here is the core version, the version for uh, PowerShell 7 uh, and PowerShell 6.2. Um, at this moment of time, this has not been released yet. 
Um, but uh, we will release it within a couple of weeks, actually, or within a few weeks. There will be a version for you to download from the PowerShell gallery. Then, um, so basically, I dropped the whole folder from my file system, which you can find uh, on your local machine if you install PNP PowerShell. And in that folder, you'll find all the assemblies and everything, just the whole folder contents, including the folder name, you just copy up to your function into the modules folder. And from that moment on, the Azure function that you created uh, will be able to use PNP PowerShell. So if we go back to the function, go to functions. I created a simple HTTP trigger that I modified a bit. Um, so if we go to the code and test option here, you'll notice um, that I have this uh, uh, line here where I create my credentials. So I'm authenticating right now with credentials, but if you use a different way of authentication, that's obviously possible too. But in, in this example, I'm using credentials. So here I have um, the username that is located in the uh, UPN uh, var variable, and here I have the password. So where does it where does it get these variables? If you're completely new to Azure Functions, uh, if you go back to the function level here, you go to configuration, you can create new application settings here. So here I created the UPN and the password where I filled in. I will obviously not unclick them, but uh, you will enter, we'll be able to enter a username and a password. Uh, and it will be stored then uh, in, uh, in connection to your function. All these variables here will be exposed as environment variables in your function. So if I go to my function again, code and test. Um, so I create a new object here of type PS credential with this username and then it because the PS credential requires something called a secure string. I'm converting the password, which is plain text. I'm converting that to a secure string. Uh, and the result is that I have a credential object that I can use with connect PNP online. I connect to my tenant to a site and I provide credentials. Once um, I'm connected, I can retrieve uh, the current web object. And from the web, I can read out the title of the web. I push it out to the log here, but I also return it as the title of the web is whatever the title will be. So if I click test and run, and I just click run, there's a log popping up here. And you see there information, demo one, and you see the results of the function. The title of the web is demo one. And this basically means that for now on you can use PNP PowerShell in an uh, Azure Function V3. And this is this is all there is to it. Um, so it's totally up to you to decide what you want to do with PNP PowerShell in the function. Uh, a little trick, I haven't tested it myself yet because um, when I'm recording this video, we have not published the, uh, the, the module uh, to the PowerShell gallery yet, but there is a functionality uh, in um, Azure Functions uh, that actually makes your life a bit easier. And that is, if you look in this file, the host JSON file, which is located in www root, you edit that one, you will notice that by default, this is set to true, managed dependency. And if this is set to true, what uh, the function runtime will do, it will check this file, the requirements PSD one. And in there, you see, we'll, you will see by default that this is turned on like this. So well, by default, it will start to download all the Azure uh, PowerShell commandlets for you. Um, you will, and, and this is just an assumption I'm making, but uh, we're not sure yet about the name yet, but it will most likely be, be uh, PNP PowerShell core, something like that, equals, and then a version number like that. So give me the version four of PNP PowerShell, uh, the core release and, um, and, and anything like 4.1, 4.2. And, and if you save this file and you will launch your function the first time, it will connect to the PowerShell gallery and will retrieve the, um, um, wait, I made a typo here because this is a JSON file. Um, it will retrieve the um, PNP PowerShell core um, module and install it for you automatically. This is uh, this is in principle uh, how you uh, create an, an Azure function and that uses PNP PowerShell. 
and that's all there is to it. So please uh, don't forget to provide feedback. You'll find the, uh, the QR code here on the slide. And um, that's it for me for today. Thank you very much. Thank you.